Should America hit back hard against Iran following the death of three American soldiers? And should we, the British, support them if they do? Well, I'm joined by Con Coughlin, Defence and Foreign Affairs Editor at The Telegraph. Uh, Con, things are escalating, aren't they? They certainly are, Nigel, and good to be with you again. Um, you. I mean, I think the, 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 the big question here is since the October 7 attacks, when the Iranian-backed Hamas terrorist group attacked Israel, Iran has been playing this very dangerous game of cat and mouse with the US and its allies in the Middle East. Uh, Tehran does not want a direct confrontation with Washington because it will lose. So it's let all its uh, proxies in the region off the hook, uh, off the leash, I should say. Yeah, uh, the Houthis, Hitler, so, yeah. Lebanon, et cetera, the Houthis in Yemen. And they're trying to set the region ablaze, and they're particularly uh, directing their fire against U.S. assets, uh, which is how this attack against the U.S. base in Jordan happened uh, yesterday. So this is what Iran is up to. And the big question is, how do we deal with it? Yeah, it's a major question, isn't it? I mean, you know, when we heard there were strikes, British and American strikes against the Houthi rebel bases, you know, I couldn't help thinking that the Saudi Arabians had been bombing the Houthis for the last six or seven years, um, and they're still there and active. And we sort of somehow look at the front pages, Con, and we think, oh, well, a couple of strikes and the whole thing's going to be over. But it isn't, is it? No, this, this is a very well-coordinated attack by Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps, they supply the weapons to the Houthis. They supply the weapons to Hezbollah. They they fund Hamas to the tune of $100 million a year. They built the Hamas infrastructure, etc. So I mean, this is Iran's way of waging war. And we need to wise up to what is going on. And you know, it is my understanding that certainly in America and probably here, we know precisely the Revolutionary Guard bases in Iran that are facil facilitating all these attacks. And, you know, I think much more of this and, and the pressure on Washington, at the very mm. least, to take out these bases will be immense. And even even dear old Joe Biden will be forced to act. Yeah, well, there's pressure coming at him today. And a final thought, if I may, Con. You know, we had this Iran nuclear deal, something that I was politically very, very opposed to and vociferously so. <laughs> um, uh, uh, absolute con job all the way through, freed up tens of billions right. of dollars, um, and, of course, they right. just ignored it. How close does intelligence tell us that Iran is to a nuclear weapon? Well, they're pretty close. And in fact, one of the world's leading experts on this issue, David Albright, uh, produced a report at the weekend in which he predicted that within five months, uh, Iran could build 12 nuclear bombs. And you, you have to see this threat within the context of everything else Iran is doing, including launching terror attacks or trying to on the streets of Great Britain. So, you know, this is something that's coming down the track very fast. And certainly the British government needs to wake up to, to the states involved and, and see what we're going to do about it. Yeah, PDQ. Con, thank you very much indeed. Let's get a military thought on this. I'm joined by Lieutenant General Jonathan Riley, military historian and, of course, retired British Army officer. Jonathan, I've never read in my life so much talk about are we heading with all these global conflicts towards World War Three. How worried are you? Uh, hello, Nigel. Thanks for asking me on. Uh, yes, I'm very worried, and everybody should be. Um, it's all too easy to talk yourself uh, into a crisis uh, rather than stand back, take a deep breath, uh, and look at the actionable intelligence, uh, because any response to what's happened needs to be on the basis of multi-source, good quality uh, actionable intelligence. Now, Con makes a very good point in this um, in this respect, that uh, the trouble with uh, saying, let's have a go at Iran, is which Iran do you mean? Yeah. Now, uh, what, what, what one diplomat who'd served a long time in Tehran said to me, as a principle, Iranian bad behavior should never be rewarded or indeed tolerated. And I think that's true. But there are multiple sources of authority in Iran. They are all opaque to each other. Uh, they play one, play each other off against another. That can be useful to them, uh, but it, and uh, because it can be a firewall, it can be a problem. 
And in this instance, the foreign ministry is denying any direct Iranian involvement, uh, but they haven't said anything about the IRGC. And I quite agree uh, that it's the IRGC, which is the problem here. They're the ones who are uh, spreading money around to all these groups, which have launched uh, uh, over 100 attacks since the start of the Gaza, uh, Gaza campaign mm -hmm. uh, against uh, with the US uh, and others. Uh, so uh, to get back to your point, if we're going to, a war, if we're going to avoid war, World War III, uh, which would be uh, started by just lashing out, uh, we need to be pretty clear about who it is that we need to target. Yeah, and no doubt that debate is going on in the Pentagon literally as we speak. And a final quick thought, Jonathan, if I can. There was talk last week of conscription maybe being needed um, and some very mixed reactions to that. Uh, but surely, at a time of such global problems, aren't our armed forces at a pitiful level in terms of size? Uh, they are indeed, but I don't think you should conflate the issue of conscription which is no. as much about social engineering as is about anything else. Um, I think the point is that the professional military forces, which take a long time, given the complexity of modern equipment, to build up, have been deliberately eroded. Now, that has got mm. to be turned around. It's got to be turned around by investment, uh, by producing terms of service which are, which are worthwhile, by energising uh, the youngsters. And there's plenty of decent youngsters out there. You go to any cadet force uh, establishment in Britain and you'll find some super youngsters. Who, who would like to serve, but it's just yeah. being made too difficult. Yeah, yeah. No, we've got to rethink all of this. Jonathan Riley, thank you very much indeed for joining me tonight on GB News.